what we are actually doing, as uh, Eric was saying. I think it will be nice to uh, hear from some recent projects that are ongoing. And in order to do that, um, Cecilia Bloran will be interviewing two people involved in such projects. Uh, Cecilia, can I uh, give you the floor? Yes, you can. Thank you, Paul. I hope you can hear me. Okay. Welcome, everybody. I am uh, very excited to have uh, the possibility to interview two of our very interesting projects ongoing. And I'd like to start with Stephanie van der Burgade, who is currently the lead contractor in the Espen Styles project that we recently heard about, which is on the scale of the Eurodata, the first rather big research project ongoing where we were expecting results this fall. And uh, Stephanie, if you're ready, I'd like you to bring in a couple of slides to explain what this project is about and then I can ask you questions. Yes, sure. Let me just try to see if I can, uh, if I can indeed uh, share the slides. I can't immediately see the sharing button, to be honest. Um, I can see you. That's good. Yeah, you can see me, but I'm I'm looking for the button to share uh, to share my slides, uh, and I can't seem to find it. But I can uh, I can start uh, talking. Um, perhaps the slides. I think no, Alan Peter, you can also. Yeah, I've shared them. So okay. perhaps yeah, I can start talking. I, I don't need them immediately. Okay. Okay. Hello, Hello, everyone. What is Espen Stars? Yes, hello everyone. Let me first say, well, I've, I've, I was introduced and thank you for the introduction and thank you for the invitation also. Um, I'm Stefanie van den Boerharde. I work for uh, Tractebel Belgium. Uh, and today I represent um, the research consortium. Eh? We're not doing this by ourselves. Um, that is working on the Stais project. It's a project for Espen. It was briefly introduced by, by Eric uh, earlier. Uh, and I'm ha very happy to explain you a bit more uh, briefly about uh, this project. So STIS, it stands for Sustainable Transport Infrastructure um, in the Strategic Urban Region Eurodelta. Uh, it's a mouth mouthful. Um, uh, so the STIS project and the SURE area, those are the names that we use a lot uh, in the research consortium. But So this is where it uh, stands for. And perhaps it's good to explain a bit more in general the context of the, the project too. So as mentioned earlier, we've set up a, a, um, a consortium for this project. Uh, cause we, are, we are four partners in this project. Uh, so uh, Tractable works together with Ghent University. Um, Professor Luc Boulens is involved. He's the coordinator of the Ma Master Spatial Planning and Urban Planning. Um, and then we have two Dutch consultancies also uh, working uh, working with us. See, Edelft and Goud Appel Kolfing and Ruprecht Consult, a German uh, subcontractor, is also uh, working together with us. Um, it would have been nice to have the entire consortium here around the table, uh, but that was unfortunately not possible. So I will try to explain uh, the, the, the basic principles of, of the study and the, the intended outcome myself. Um, it's a one-year project um, approximately, so in principle we should indeed finalize the study after um, the summer. And the geographical scope, of course, is the, the Shure area, um, the Euro Delta. Um, we focus also on three particular corridors, uh, Brussels, Lille, um, Rijnwaal and Rijn, uh, Rijn uh, Schelde. Um, and an important aspect um, of this project is that a rather large group of um, stakeholders, as we call them, are involved in the study. They represent the entire area, um, the, the, the area of the scope of this study and the corridors. So the province of South Holland, uh, Dutch cities as Amsterdam and The Hague. Uh, the region of Flanders, Brussels and Lille, metropole region, Rhineland, the rural area. So they are all involved in the study. We are working together, um, um, so to say, um, which is interesting, interesting of course, uh, for this project that we are not doing this by ourselves, but we are supported by the entire scope of the study physically. So this is, uh, this is interesting. Um, the main goals of the project um, is to figure out some, some things, uh, first of all, uh, to which extent are the local and regional, uh, national, international flows of persons and goods, um, to what extent are they affecting the sustainable growth uh, in the sure uh, area. How could cross-border movement of people and goods um, develop, taking into account uh, the horizons of 2030 uh, and 2050. Um, to which extent uh, do transport infrastructure and, and, and spatial policies in the, in the Shure area contribute 
to European uh, transport targets, to European uh, targets um, for sustainable growth. Um, and what could be done also policy-wise, um, but also with concrete actions to better contribute to these targets um, uh, and by which policies and by which actions um, at which level and, and at which scale. And uh, also very important in particular, um, how can cross-border and inter-metropolitan um, cooperation could contribute to achieving uh, these targets? Thank you for, uh, for sharing the slides. Okay, so the main, um, the main steps uh, in this project are the following. Um, so, okay, the inception phase is an introduction phase that we, uh, we went through. Um, first, we developed some kind of methodological framework. And if you wouldn't mind going to the, the last slide, then I can, uh, yeah, quickly. I don't want to pay too much attention to that, but we developed, um, it was more in particular University of Ghent, um, some kind of framework. It's the free market arena model um, developed by Ugent as some kind of guidance for us uh, throughout uh, most elements of the, of the study. Um, you can go back to the first slide. Thank you. Um, uh, this is something that we, we went through the last, uh, at, the, at the beginning of the study. Um, uh, can, can you go back to the, to the first slide, please? Yes, thank you. No, second slide. Thank you. Um, um, at the stage where we, where we are now actually is uh, the network analysis and policy analysis. So for the network analysis, uh, we are developing, we are at the stage of finalizing um, a network analysis, a baseline scenario as a starting point to build some kind of baseline scenario for the development of the mobility flows in the entire Shure area towards 2030, 2050. Uh, this baseline scenario will, will serve as the reference for um, comparing other scenarios eh? and it will include existing and relevant policies, strategies and decisions taken in the SURE area. Um, this network analysis uh, goes hand in hand or, or will be followed by a policy analysis. Um, in this subtask we, uh, we will or we select um, a set of relevant policy measures. Uh, for the scope of this study, and those policy measures will be analyzed more um, in detail. Um, this is a, a, the main bulk of, uh, of, of, the, of the research uh, in, in, this, in this project. Um, afterwards, we look towards implementation, and we look ahead um, uh, what the implementation um, uh, uh, will look like for the research done in the network analysis uh, and the policy analysis. Um, and at the end of the study, we investigate cross-border and inter-metropolitan uh, cooperation. Uh, we check what the possibilities are and, and what we uh, what we can uh, what we come up with uh, uh, for this uh, for this study. Um, it's, it's, it's a crucial element. It's not because it's mm -hmm. at the end of the study that it's not important, as already framed by the previous uh, uh, speakers. Um, so that is very briefly uh, the study that we are um, working on, and at this stage we are uh, we are finalizing network analysis um, and looking ahead to the policy analysis uh, and the other steps. And in principle, after summer, uh, we should come up with uh, with our final uh, results, uh, which will uh, most likely be uh, be shared among all the relevant uh, interested uh, parties um, in the in the area. Thank you. Voila. Voila. <laughs> but I still have questions. Um, but where well, you can leave the slides. It's actually interesting for a moment to, to just place it on the on the agenda of the entire project. But I'm curious because you're now in the middle of the uh, project. Basically, we just had a year, and I think it's great for the Eurodelta on in a first phase to get such an overview. Also, in terms of evidence-based figures. I think this is something within the roadmap we found out that this network needs and it's great that it's on the way in the meantime and it helps to have this network analysis and policy analysis because the crucial thing I think is having an overview on what's happening on the scale of the Eurodelta particularly in the first stage in a focus with mobility and infrastructure topics but I think also focusing on the three corridors that are running through the entire Eurodelta. It is a very good first approach and I think um, I was wondering, I mean, if you would have already concrete interim results at this moment in time, or is that something that is still ongoing and that you cannot really share 
to yeah, it's to it's still ongoing. I could elaborate on that, but at this stage, we are uh, we are nearing uh, an, the interim report, uh, and and it would be uh, I think it would be better to have uh, to have a discussion first with with the client and with uh, with our partner stakeholders as we call them before mm -hmm. we uh, we launch this uh, publicly. Uh, so uh, it's a very good question, and uh, and I understand that you're curious, but. Um, it, it would be better to have uh, to have a consultation with with uh, with our clients and with uh, our partner stakeholders first. And when you talk about towards implementation, I mean, of course, you will not implement infrastructure projects, but you might highlight where could be pilot actions, where could be missing links that need to be better. Yeah. In, in, indeed, for the towards implementation uh, uh, task, uh, as we as we call it, it's 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 not a separate task. It's it's linked to the policy analysis, of course. But we want to do more than just assess the impact of a selection of, of, of policy measures. We also want to look ahead and see, okay, what are the implementation barriers? What is What could be an interesting uh, implementation plan for the selection of policy measures that we're looking at at this stage so that it's more hands-on and concrete than just the, um, an impact assessment, an impact on, uh, on uh, um, impact on, uh, on uh, CO2 reduction or impact on economic aspects. Uh, so we want to look a bit further and also check the implementation um, um, aspects of, of a specific uh, policy measure or policy measure package. And that, bring, that brings me also to the question of the entire COVID crisis obviously has an impact also on, our, on how we move and if there is the concept of maybe demobility also in that region. Mm are having this conference right now virtually not in the Hague where we might, might have had it done or in Rotterdam but I'm wondering do you think this has an impact also have you been considering this within your it's a, it's um it's a diff it's it's difficult when you take a look at uh, it, it's it's interesting and it's relevant obviously but if you take a look at at, at covid or other health crises it's 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 it, it's not easy to assess the impact of that it's, it's is it a game changer or not it's very um, the impact is huge, but um, in, in principle, in the network analysis, um, the health crisis or COVID has been or will be taken into account as, a, as an external trend um, in the policy analysis where, where relevant, um, but it, it, it should be based uh, enough on, 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 on facts and evidence, and we can, we can say a lot of interesting things about that. Um, but it's not always easy, of course, to um, to um, to look ahead and take into account the effects of of, of COVID. Uh, but it's it's something that we are we are we have been discussing a lot, and it's not something that we and you ignore. Your project falls right in the middle of it. I mean, exactly. Yeah, it's it's an it's a very interesting and it's uh, it's uh, it's it's an interesting aspect, at least for. For debating for 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 hours, uh, uh, but it's um, yeah we, we take it into account as, as far as possible and as far as doable. Uh, but it's uh, it's it's included in principle in in the network analysis as uh, as a uh, an external trend. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. But uh, I think we're very curious about the proposals on the cross border and intermetropolitan cooperation because I think this is what's really fruitful also for the network to build future decisions upon or to find out in what direction it's developing. And I think this also brings us now, it's a good bridge to our next speaker, because connecting the intermetropolitan cooperation and the cross-border collaboration within the Eurodata, obviously it is built on the backbone of rail and also other transport infrastructures, including air travel, even though it's, I'd like to hear more about that from Maurits Schassner, if there is actually a lot of air travel in the, on the scale of the Euro Delta, but I'm sure that will also change after COVID. And I think to look at both transportation systems at the same time, I think this needs to be done. And there's someone like Maurits Schaffsma who has a lot of experience in that field. So if you want to show your single slide and tell us more about the project Go Europe, Go Rail, which was also done by Delta Metropole Association and is dealing with rail and infrastructure travel and buildings on the scale of Eurodata. Yes, <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm uh, Maurits Schaafsma and I'm a board member of uh, uh, Delta Metropole. I used to work for Schiphol Airport for uh, an important part of my life uh, and I'm now working for the Schiphol Aerotropolis, uh, also called uh, Haarlemmermeer municipality. Uh, but still heavily involved in uh, rail issues and in uh, and in air uh, related issues. 
um, I want to add to the blurring of the definition of the Euro Delta uh, by uh, uh, introducing uh, the air transport perspective. Because if you look at the area from the perspective of air transportation, you can say that uh, uh, the, the, the slide that I show you uh, is actually the, the area uh, of, uh, of the metropolitan region from air transport perspective. The two busiest air routes in Europe uh, are between London and Paris and between London and Amsterdam. Uh, but not only from the perspective of that volume, also from the position of the airport. If you look at airports uh, from their connectivity, uh, you can see that there is a kind of an elite of airports that have by far the best connectivity. Those are the big hub airports of, uh, of the airline alliances. And, uh, and they are in this, uh, located in this area. It's uh, for a sky team, it is Amsterdam and Paris. For one world, it is London. And in the south, it is uh, Madrid. And for Star Alliance, it is Frankfurt and, uh, and Munich. But these airports have far more direct connections than other uh, smaller uh, uh, airports. And, um, uh, and if you look from the perspective of this definition of the Euro Delta, you can distinguish two big metropolitan uh, regions with big airports, uh, London and Paris, and two relatively small Centric urban systems uh, with big airports that are Amsterdam and, uh, and Frankfurt. Um, there's a lot going on in this area because you can also say that this is one of the uh, European uh, uh, mega regions, and it is the mega region that you could maybe call the capital mega region of uh, Europe. Uh, London is by far the most economic. Uh, financial economic center of, uh, of Europe. It is uh, the only one really playing on the global uh, uh, level. And with Brexit, the position of London is changing. Uh, but London will remain the main capital, uh, financial economic capital of Europe, in spite of uh, being outside uh, of the European Union. And the institutions and uh, companies leaving London because of Brexit, they don't go to uh, uh, a successor of London on the European continent because they spread. They spread over Dublin and Amsterdam, Frankfurt, uh, Paris. That means that uh, the working of these cities as a metropolitan system becomes more important. They're competing with the other mega city regions in North America and in, uh, and in Asia, it is important that this region keeps its strength. And um, and, and if they can be connected in a kind of borrowed size uh, principle uh, better um, uh, between uh, amongst each other, then they can work more as one system, also connecting to the smaller uh, metropolitan region in between those uh, cornerstones of, uh, of this new uh, air definition of the, of the Euro Delta. If you want to combine economic interest, a, a green agenda and a transport agenda, you could say that uh, within this area, the high speed train can take much of the role of air transportation. The distances are such that the high speed train has a very good position. You see that already uh, with the Thales and the other the TGVs between Brussels and, uh, uh, and Paris, but also between Amsterdam and Paris, you see the potential of the, of the Eurostar and uh, there are some uh, weak spots in this network, uh, but there's a huge potential for a further uh, uh, role, strength, strength, stronger role for the train. Uh, from the Amsterdam perspective, for, uh, for example, it's also the connection to London that has the biggest uh, uh, potential to catch the market from the air and to bring it, uh, to, bring it to the train. For this, you should, of course, do something about some of the missing links in this uh, rail network. And one of them uh, is between uh, Amsterdam and Frankfurt, uh, where between Utrecht and the rhine ruhr area, there is a, uh, a big issue with, with speed and capacity of the, uh, of the rail line. What's also uh, relevant is to, uh, to link the high-speed train network uh, to the airport. Uh, and that you have an integration within the metropolitan region of high-speed train station, airports with high-speed high train connection, and the business centers. Uh, of course, also the tourist centers, but the, the, the business centers 
are more important because in the business market, this efficiency of proximity uh, uh, is, is a very important uh, factor. Uh, for example, in Paris, if you arrive by uh, train, you come in Gare du Nord. If you arrive by plane uh, inter uh, intercontinental, you arrive at Charles de Gaulle. In both cases, you are quite far away from the La Défense uh, area, uh, which is a kind of, a, uh, of an issue uh, that is not solved by the Grand Paris uh, metro projects that's now uh, underway. In Frankfurt, it's much more compact, the combination of high-speed train, railway, and uh, the business center. And also in Amsterdam, it's much more compact. I think it is a, it is a big challenge that you, that you work on the metropolitan level and on this international level uh, the, had to, to take the advantage of the potential of integration of the high-speed train and the, uh, uh, and the plane network. So that is the uh, electric planes, because uh, they are partly in the market of the high-speed train uh, and they are coming. Uh, the size is still uh, limited, uh, the, the, the size of the planes, it's around 30 people, but the business case is very positive. It will be economically feasible to fly uh, distances uh, up to 400, maybe 500 kilometers by electric planes. But that is not necessarily uh, a problem for the high-speed train network. And so the, the, the investment uh, in the infrastructure of the high-speed train is likely to be limited. And uh, the electric planes have a bit of a problem in flying the really intensive uh, markets like between Amsterdam and London, because you need many, many planes and many, many smaller airports to accommodate them. So there the high-speed train still has a strong position. But in the smaller markets, this uh, electric plane can have a, a serious market uh, potential and can be an alternative for very high investments in, in high-speed rail. And I think that's one of the issues. And it has to be addressed, I think, on the European level, how to deal with the transport uh, policy that uh, favors the high-speed train where it has a good position uh, and, uh, and, and can take advantage of uh, combining a, a climate agenda and a transportation and an economic development agenda. Yes. Yeah. So you're lucky I have only one slide. <laughs> I know, <laughs> and a lot of information. No, but thank you very much. That's very um, interesting for the starting point. Um, I was wondering, because we didn't talk about time horizons right now, but you mentioned already the electric planes that might play a bigger role on the scale of the Euro Delta, but also, of course, a backbone, good railway infrastructure system, which we have with lines, but we might not, whether, not have with a high-speed connection yet. So this has to be planned in parallel, and I guess it's complementary. But I was wondering, what do you think could be, in this context, the quick wins that we were just in the beginning of the lunch forum talking about? What could be a first approach in integrating rail and air yeah. travel? I, I think uh, one of the qu uh, the quick wins is to offer an integrated product uh, of transportation, and it has to do with ticketing and uh, and timetables and all kinds of, of services. I think if you see uh, uh, the high speed train as a substitution for flying, uh, a real substitution, that will be quite difficult because uh, having a, a, a baggage product and an airport uh, where you uh, bring your product to the high-speed train, your, your luggage to the high-speed train, and it is transferred in a system uh, at the airport between the train and the plane. That's very complicated, expensive, uh, time-consuming uh, to make, but you can just start with, uh, with ticketing, uh, with timetables uh, to make it easy uh, to have the combination of a, a plane ticket and a, and a train ticket. I think that is a, that is a quick win. Mm -hmm. and, and make optimal use of the, the infrastructure that is already there. Uh, and that can be things like timetable uh, optimization uh, as well. Yeah. Infrastructure is always time consuming, of course, additional infrastructure. Yes, but uh, do you think that the plane options that we have, electric planes in the future, combining both aspects too, with the rail infrastructure that is in place and better ticketing, but do you think this is something that needs to be paid attention to right now and they should be invited? Yes table in order to have an integrated concept of both okay yeah because I, I until now i missed that element in discussion about the high-speed train and the, the high-speed train discussion has the risk of uh, addressing just the high-speed train 
and uh, and there's uh, I think you have to prioritize because it is so difficult to add uh, infrastructure for for high speed trains that you have to take in, into consideration what are the alternatives and and how should we prioritize uh, because you have to make decisions on which project uh, is to be prioritized and uh, and it has to do with the economic importance the the potential market uh, so the, the number of people that uh, that will make use of uh, of your new infrastructure and then where you will not have the the possibility of uh, adding infrastructure that's that's exactly where this electric flying can have a big potential and, and be a very feasible uh, alternative and also being uh, rather green okay Thank you. I think this is something that the Sure Eurodata or Sure Network could take uh, into a discussion on another topic or in another webinar, including this air perspective, because I think this is especially on the scale of Eurodata, an yeah. interesting, maybe even interim result, because it's something that is happening maybe at a better, at, a, at an yeah. expensive speed than the rail infrastructure can uphold. And yeah. and maybe then I can present two slides. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but just one last question. Uh, what do you think of the concept of an airport city? Because this is a, a growing phenomenon. And I think Schiphol is quite there, developing well, city within. Yes, I, I worked on the airport city uh, issue uh, uh, for, for many years. And uh, I think it is, uh, whatever you think of it, it is a reality. Uh, so uh, like railway stations, uh, also airport attracts uh, urban development. And, uh, and the question is, how do you deal with that urban uh, development and how, uh, how can you turn that into a positive thing instead of a negative thing that is unplanned, unwanted uh, and, uh, and neglected? So I, I'm, a, uh, I'm a big uh, in, in favor of uh, making positive concepts of integrating uh, air accessibility, land accessibility and urban development in also mixed programs and of course that's that is different from an urban area that can also include housing because that is the issue of course on airport but still very interesting combinations of uh, of land use are possible uh, uh, at airports and around airports and, uh, uh, and, and a very interesting example for example uh, at this moment is uh, in Zurich uh, the new project of the circle which I think is also from the conceptual point of view, a very interesting airport city uh, project. And that is, uh, Schiphol used to be quite ahead in, uh, in this airport city development, but I think the most uh, interesting project at this moment would be uh, Zurich, uh, the circle. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good example of what you can do uh, with a program on an airport, an urban program on an airport. Yes. We just, I just see now, and I think this is one of the last questions we should pick up and then continue with the program, but there was a question uh, when you refer to including rail and flights in the same ticketing, what do you think, for an example, that requires taking the train from, for instance, Antwerp to Schiphol, and how can we develop this concept, this approach more strategically, the ticketing? Yes. Yeah, I think you have to, to uh, think of an incentive uh, that the airlines and the railway companies uh, get an interest in, in doing that. Um, I think in, in traveling, uh, some changes will come, uh, not only because of COVID, so that, that will change uh, air transport also after the crisis, but especially the combination of, uh, of COVID and the climate agenda will change uh, air transportation. Uh, so uh, polluting will cost. And, uh, and you will see that in, in, in tickets. And there might come a, a moment that it's also in the interest of airlines to work together uh, with the railway companies for combined, uh, for combined tickets. Uh, and uh, I think that's, that's the way that you should look at, uh, at it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maurits. I think we're gonna continue with the program because- You're we welcome. Now I try to stop share that you don't see my slide the rest of the day. <laughs> 